Did you know that Jesus was depicted up until I don't know, 500 AD as a magician and quite often like in this picture holding a wand? Yeah, you know, what do you think of as Harry Potter or Gandalf? Sometimes it was just a piece of a sacred tree or a stick. It had to be a certain type of branch of a tree. Or there were other cases where it was the horn of a unicorn. Now in medicines, that was a rhinoceros. And we found things that, yeah, it does have medicinal properties, but we, we have little blue pills that fix all that and do everything else other heart medicines and so on that go along with that that's where they found that but in the sense of a wand the unicorn's horn was the horn of a narwhal and uh, it looks like a dolphin but uh, out the front of it which is actually a type of tooth coming out its front it spirals and makes what we think of and always draws a unicorn horn And here he is raising Lazarus from the dead, and when he's doing, he's using necromancy, which you would think of in your mind probably as automatically something of the devil. It's trying to raise people from the dead and do everything while it's at in its dark magic. Right? Well, he's pulling this off here, but if you're doing it for good, I mean, uh, this is the problem with the Sith. That's probably for another video, though. For he does look kind of like a Jedi here going on. But here, let's see if I can show you Jesus Christ, King, Lord, and Savior, being born and even in a manger. I'll show you that whole thing here. And off of Miriam. So Leo is always known as the king of the beasts, right? Well, when mankind became king of beasts and uh, master of the beast, and there's symbology of that in the Sumerians and so on, strongly show this effect, but I've shown that effect all across the ancient world. But he's the king of beasts, and because of that fact, people may have configured the idea that Regulus, this star, actually in Latin that means king, or Regus means king. And the Sumerian name, Sharu, actually has to do with kings and the Shar, but it also, Sharu, is child of the king sometimes used as such or just child so from that conflagration of words and concepts that they got you can twist this around and so you end up getting this child that's born here but using sharu may it would be an anointed one this is just like christ or christos so simply from one word in the Sumerian tale of the Zodiac, using alternate forms and meanings of each little part of each word, you can get different meanings. And if you twist it around just right, you might be able to get a story out of it. There's a kid's game that used to do this with a, it would have three or four words up on the paper or whatever, and then you had to choose from like eight or ten words and try to make something that makes sense and it really only pretty much went one way kind of did the other way and sometimes it was funny if it did but here you get this idea of the king child the anointed one christ child and king right here in one thing now in this little series here i've shown you a lot of the sumerians zodiac and all their forms of it and pieces of it but uh, there's all kinds of connections that you can get by just simply using 
their secondary forms of words and also if that in your language sounds kind of like our word for something else. And in fact, sometimes loan words were made that way, but that's just starting to go off in left field. So let's look at this. How do we get this Christ child, which you see on the little right middle part of the picture there, how do we get it with a virgin though and all of this type stuff? Well, the laying down person, Virgo here, which is supposed to be a virgin, right? So here we get with Mary and the concept that's there. But if you also think of it, we also have a freshwater river running right up by here. And that also means freshwater. And yam means salt water or the sea. Like yam was the uh, creature of the sea that had to be killed by the ancient Canaanites. And if you'll look, that's the same story where the serpent that I showed you in the last video, I'll try to show it again in here, where there's a serpent and there's Inky and Aquarius and all of the waters that are basically running down and below this. But here we have a virgin, which absin actually means furrow, but there are alternates for each one of these words, right? And in Leo's tale, there's a star and set up that comes out to be a sacred plant that somewhat looks like pot or the top part of mandrake growing leaves and so on. But it's a pregnancy goddess known as Eru, right? And this is a goddess of fertility. But her name is conflagrated in the word for pregnancy also. And so by the conflagration of the situation that you have going on here, just in one little spot in the skies, trying to make a story out of it, you can easily get a pregnant version, a uh, pregnant virgin there. And she's going to end up having this Christ child that's in Leo there, and Regulus and the king. You can see what I'm talking about. Now it says bitter sea here. Maratu. So this is the marriage of the bitter sea and the freshwater sea, but then the absu or absin, see how that works together, tick tock, pun on words, down below her ends up going to the bitter sea and the absu. And then there are rivers that are running up here in freshwater. And of course, freshwater and salt water meet together, and that's where you know, the things happened and so on in the other tales. And it's right here in the same exact spot too, by the way, rolling through all of these little tales that are here. But uh, so you, you can get this idea of there's that Christ child that, that's there. There's a few other ways you can look at this too. But um, so Regulus is a star and the star art also means Lying, it's part of the word to lay down. Sharu, we've already talked out about as being a kid or a child or an infant. Lugal, and one of its meanings is fine made cloth. Lugal is part of Lugal Banda's name and so on, and it was the kings that wore the fine clothing and so on too, so it's cognate with that, but it's different. The, the Lou is a regular person, like the regular guy, which is Aries, which we've talked about. And, but Gaul is great. And so this great person would wear, be wearing finer cloths. Leo, which is a lion, but also in the ah cognate, it would mean inside. Labu is cognate with a lion, but also in wrapped. I think in the way that wrapped up, like how they would grab something and wrap it all up, like a cat grabs up something and wraps it all up, but wrapped up. And M44 over here at the right of Leo is actually Fatne, and that's been described as being a manger or a little box-like thing that's over here for animals. It's also used in the Noah-type story here, that, but it's written in the stars, you see, but uh, 
So out of this little cognate, you can get the idea that there's a star that shows a lying infant in fine cloth, right? Lying in a manger and he's to be the king. Hopefully you all can see that, that I'm showing you there. Now, what we talked about before here is you can see the boat in the bottom left-hand corner coming through, and that's Argo in later tales, but it's also Inky's ancient boat that goes up in the fresh water and around through, I've spoken of in some of the other videos. And there's Jesus right above it, walking on water. There's the mountain of Ararat up above it there. And what's mixing from this is a square of Pegasus, which actually sets in somewhere right in here. And that ends up being the ark or the box that is referred to in the boat there above the waters at the end. And there's the mountain of Gemini actually that's made out of. So odd how there, there can be these connections to keep rolling around and through, rolling around through, but you can actually take the Zodiac and go around and around the Zodiac and make up stories. Sometimes you can zigzag and jut from here to here, but a lot of times it's just all right there in one little spot. You don't have to do any jumping through hoops to make it happen. This is a small little quadrant of the sky every night that rolls by as Orion rolls by because that Jesus walking on water that you see right there on the left-hand side, Dingir Damu, which actually means, well, Damu is the sun and Dingir is the God's name in Sumerians. So Dingir Damu is son of God. Sukal, which is our Mulsukal, which is hooked up to it, which has to do with stars, but also he's the anointed one written in the stars that he was going to happen. But who is that? That's Orion. So I've showed you in the Orion connection videos that I did, but Mul and Suhab hooked up together is tread upon and Mul with Nab means to go upon the sea, not necessarily in the fresh waters. So that's another reason the Sea of Galilee is turned into a sea in the tale for it because it was written in the stars. It's actually a sea. Can't you see? But it's really just a giant lake, isn't it? But there's that boat that he goes out to whenever he walks on water. Yeah. They make a strange connection too with that that goes on and that weird story that happens there. But that gets conflagrated with another thing that I've shown you and like Flavian signature and so on. And of course, over here at the right, there's Inky, but that's Aquarius. That's also Neptune. And to the left of that is that ancient sea dragon Tiamat and the abyss and the things that go on with that. But that's also the Kraken that gets unleashed into the Mediterranean or the middle of earth. That's what Mediterranean means. On to the next one, guys. Let me know what you think downstairs here, but I think I just showed you Christ in the stars and made connections a few more times to some of the other bits. Stick with me, I'm going, I'm on a run here. I'm on a roll.